Hey everyone, we are going to pick up on page 68. So last week in class you were introduced to hypothesis testing and your worksheet was very similar to this example that we're going to do. I had to do with the same problem, the numbers were just a little different. Um, so the example says the claim is that the proportion of adults who smoked a cigarette in the past week is less than 25% or 0.25 and the sample statistics include um, 100, uh, 1,018 subjects with 224 saying that they smoked. And so <clears throat> the first thing you do in a null and alternative hypothesis is you state the null and you state the alternative. And uh, we're using the parameter P because it's a proportion that we're testing. And so our null hypothesis will have the letter P in it. Our null hypothesis will always have the equal sign in it. And it will be uh, uh, equal to whatever we're claiming. So if uh, the 25% is what the claim is, then P is going to be equal to 0.25. The sample proportion never goes in there. So P hat uh, won't go in there. And then uh, the alternative is whatever the claim is. And um, he's claiming, or the researcher's claiming, that it's less than 0.25. And so I still have my letter P in there. I have the uh, sign less than, and then the same number that's in the null uh, goes in the alternative. And so there's my null and alternative hypotheses, and I'm going to um, use the sample data to collect that. So the idea is that the researcher thinks that the true percentage is less than 25%, and so he goes out and collects data. And we know that, oops, we know that even if um, it was 25%, uh, the sample data is not going to be equal to exactly 25%. And so we see how different uh, our sample data is compared to the null hypothesis. All right, and so we can still draw a picture for these problems. This would be 0.25. And then we want to uh, calculate our sample proportion. So that's going to be p hat. And that's going to equal 224 divided by 1,018. And that's equal to 0 0.220. OK, so 0 0.220 is over here somewhere. And then because I have less than in the alternative, I'm interested in the area less than 0.22, so I'm interested in this area right here. So the idea with hypothesis testing is that the researcher generally wants to show the alternative hypothesis is true, and so the further away that we can get from 0.25 with our data, the more support we have for the alternative. Well, the further away that we get, the smaller and smaller the p-value is. And so this uh, area right here, oops, is the p-value. And so I judge my, I make my decision based on my p-value. And I can get the p-value by calculating what we call a test statistic and looking up the area under the curve for the normal distribution. So just remember, the smaller the p-value, the more support we have for the alternative. So let's go ahead and write that out somewhere. So the smaller the p-value, the more support for the alternative. I hope you can write neater than that. So the more support for the alternative HA, or H1, sorry. All right, so we're going to go ahead and calculate our test statistic. And we have all the information that we need. We have P hat, that's our sample proportion. P just comes from the null hypothesis, so that's 0.2. And then Q is always 1 minus P, so that's going to be 0.75. 
And then n is our sample size, so 10,018. <clears throat> okay, so we have uh, 0.22 minus 0.25, that's what's in our null. And that's going to be divided by 0.25 times 0.75 divided by uh, t uh, 1018. So that's our z-score. Once I get my z-score, I can just use the normal table to look that up. So this is negative uh, 2.21. All right, now I can just go to my normal table. Uh -oh. My normal table disappeared. Oh. I don't know where it went. Okay, well, just imagine you have a normal table and you're going to look up that value um, of negative 2.21, the area to the left turns out to be 0 0.0136. And so that's our p-value. OK, and remember we said the smaller the p-value, the more support for H0. Well, a lot of times the 0 0.05 is used as a cutoff. And our p-value is less than 0 0.05. And so I can make my conclusion based on that. So the p-value of 0 0.0136 is less than 0 0.05. Um, remember, we're trying to show the alternative hypothesis your p-value is small, then you have support for the alternative hypothesis. The alternative hypothesis is stating that p is less than 0.25. Since our p-value is small, we are uh, able to conclude that the uh, proportion of smokers is less than So let's go ahead and do that on the calculator. So if you have a TI calculator, what you want to do is go to STAT, and then you want to go to TEST. That's primarily where we're going to from now on is to TEST. And this is a hypothesis test for proportion, and it's a one proportion test. So we go to uh, number five. And the first number is the number that's in your null. So you could remember that because there's this a P naught. So just remember H naught for the null. So that's going to be 0.25. And then your X is just your count. And so we had uh, 224 for a count of smokers. And N is, uh, N is your sample size. Oops. And that was 10,018. And then the last thing is the sign of your alternative hypothesis. So our sign was less than, so we want to put uh, less than, we want to enter less than. Oops. So I highlight less than, I hit enter, and then I go down to calculate and hit enter. Okay, so here's our test statistic. It was negative 2.21. And then our p-value is right here, 0 0.0136. p-hat is just our sample proportion. That was 22. So when we do this on the calculator, we get our test statistic of negative 2.21. And we get a p-value of 0 0.0136. Our p-hat was 20.22.